Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Later in the show, we'll get to your comments and questions, but right now, we still have a lot of news coming out of the New York Auto Show. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Mustang, Ford displayed the all-new version on the observatory deck of the Empire State Building in New York, recreating the same stunt the company pulled off 50 years ago when it first introduced the pony car. The AutoLine crew was on hand for the unveiling of the new model, and we wanted to share it with you. And what a breathtaking view! Because there is not enough room for a helicopter to lift the car to the top of the skyscraper, Ford had to cut the Mustang up into little pieces, small enough to fit in elevators and then reassemble it at the top of the building. Big news from Dodge coming out of New York. Besides celebrating the 100th anniversary of the brand, there are some styling tweaks to the Challenger and a significant redesign to the Charger. Let's start with the Challenger, which gets new front and rear fascias. The hood scoops are now wider and longer, making them more pronounced, and the grille is compressed to make it look like the headlamps are peering out. Inside, the instrument cluster and center console are inspired by the look of the 1971 Challenger. One big important change under the hood is that this car now gets an 8-speed automatic with rev matching, which, with the base V6 engine, knocks a half second off a 0 to 60 run. But the big change is with the Charger, which gets all new sheet metal and which now bears a strong family resemblance to the Dodge Dart. In fact, I think there's a good chance this redesign might actually help sales of the Dart by making that car more noticeable. The Charger has more plan view, both front and rear, which means they kind of rounded off the corners of the car, which in person makes it look shorter, even though it has the same overall length. Also, the rear buttress, which is where the roof slopes into the trunk, is longer, which makes the rear deck look shorter. The design staff at Chrysler is getting good at hiding little design tricks, which they call Easter eggs because you have to hunt to find them, and one of the Easter eggs on the Charger regards the holes in the grill. Those holes are actually shaped like the overall grill. One other interesting side note, the changes to the Charger include making it compatible with the Insurance Institute's small overlap crash test. Speaking in New York yesterday, GM CEO Mary Barra announced that the company is creating a special group to focus exclusively on safety during vehicle development. The team will report to the head of product development, Mark Royce, and meanwhile, the Detroit News reports GM is asking the courts to protect it from lawsuits involving that ignition switch defect before its bankruptcy in 2009. The company wants all those lawsuits to be dumped into the old GM, better known as Motors Liquidation. And Nissan announced that it will take a page right out of Tesla's book and offer free public charging to new LEAF owners. The promotion called No Charge to Charge will give customers who purchase or lease a new LEAF an all-access card to charging centers that's good for two years. As of right now, the offer is only available to the top 10 cities for LEAF sales, but Nissan will be extending it to an additional 15 markets next year. With sales of the all-electric car going pretty well, we think that this promotion should help to continue that trend, but it's probably going to tick off all the people who already bought a LEAF and cannot get free charging. Hey, coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Sonata from Hyundai. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Ron Paris points out that our report that Toyota is the first to use an Atkinson cycle engine in a non hybrid car is actually not the first application of Atkinson cycle engine in a non hybrid vehicle by a Japanese manufacturer. 
Mazda uses the technology in its current line of Skyactiv engines. Well, that's close, Ron, but not exactly right. Mazda actually says that Skyactiv uses a Mazda Miller cycle because the Miller cycle is their method of obtaining an Atkinson cycle. Mark says, John, your comment that the current gen Mustang dates back to the 1970s Fox body platform is wrong. The 2005 Mustang represented a clean break from that platform as Ford used a modified Lincoln LS platform as a starting point for the 2005 Mustang. And thanks for that correction. Gary Susie wants to know, John, don't you think Toyota recalling six and a half million cars helps GM? Well, Gary, you know that Toyota recalled six and a half million cars, and I know that Toyota recalled six and a half million cars, but all the public knows is that GM covered up a massive defect. Lexa pines that. I prefer what VW did to the Jetta in its refresh, which is keeping the design almost timeless. What else would you expect from VW? Look how long the original VW Beetle remained virtually unchanged. It's what's under the hood and inside the passenger compartment that counts. Well, the Model T looked the same for decades too, until its sales collapsed. Timeless or not, VW sales and market share are sinking in the American market, and redesigning a car in a way that no one can tell the new one is a bad move. I keep saying this is a key reason why the new Chevrolet Silverado is a sales dud, and that's actually a fantastic truck. Ramon Rivera also has something to say about this. Versa, Jetta, and Cruze front refreshes. I can't really see the difference without having the older cars aside those new. I wonder if customers will notice and value the changes. Exactly. Exactly what I'm saying. Thank you, Ramon. Pure Moose wants to know, John, is there a polish available that would give your car paint protection and a flat finish without the shine? Not to my knowledge. Anybody else out there know anything about this? If not, Pure Moose, you ought to run out and patent that idea. Bradley has a suggestion for General Motors. One way to get ahead of this bad PR is to state that by January 1st, 2015, all GM vehicles sold in North America will have push-button start. This eliminates all ignition questions, give the customer something they want, and inevitably will have anyway. Bradley, if it was in my power, I would appoint you the head of public relations at General Motors. That is an A-plus idea. Hey, I want to thank you for all your letters and comments. You help us make this a better show. And speaking of shows, don't miss out a line after hours. Tonight, Gary Vasilash is hosting it from the floor of the New York Auto Show, where he posed a bunch of your questions to a bunch of automotive executives. That show will air tonight, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. But that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.